if you have a composition that looks like this and everything is working until you get to the last frame, did you catch it? I'll play that part again. If you notice, right at the end there's a flash and you can see that there's a no frame available for media out one error. This is an error that we're familiar with, but the behavior of this one is a little bit different. If I scrub through the timeline, that error doesn't pop up. It only pops up on the very last frame of the composition. I found a workaround for this one. We'll grab it and move it out so I can work on it independently here. As you can see, the error is populating there. Right click on the clip, select new compound clip, hit create. I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna go back one frame. Hit option B, delete that portion. That error is gone now. Scroll back out so we can see and we'll substitute our new clip for that one. And now when we play through this particular video, that error is gone. One of the things that you'll notice is when I do that fix, if I scroll way in, you can see that this particular clip is not aligned with the others. It's only off by one frame, but for some of us, we like to keep things neat and tidy, and that's a concern. Easily resolved. What we'll do for that one is we have the same situation here. If I go take a look at that last frame, the error is still in play. So we're going to duplicate our work, but we're going to do one thing differently. Here, what I'm going to do is scroll in so you can see very well, and I'm going to go over one frame. I'm going to extend out my effect by that one frame. So if I go back, I get the error. If I go back further, it's gone. So now I'm going to click and create my new compound clip. Create. It's already selected. I'm going to hit option B to cut and then delete that piece. And once again, the error is gone. If I go back out, play this particular clip. Issues resolved. And just to be safe, we'll double check it right there. That issue's gone. Now, initially when I was troubleshooting this, I thought that I would be able to carve it up in place. So let's decompose and get that clip back. So our error is back once we remove the compound clip feature from it. I thought initially, let me carve up just the clip regularly and see how that goes. I can do the same thing, but the error, it persists. It doesn't go anywhere. No matter how many times I do it or how far back I go, the persistence of that error, it maintains itself. But as soon as I go in, right click, make it a compound clip, go back however far you want. Here I'm just doing one frame. The reason I'm only going back one frame is I don't want to upset the fidelity of the effect. I want it to operate just like it has been aside from that last frame. And one frame is probably not going to affect how it looks that much. And But as soon as I do that, I'm back in business. Again, this is a very conditional thing. It's very specific for this particular issue. As we'll see later though, there are several different permutations of this type of error. Let's take a look at our next clip. For this clip, right at the very beginning, I'm getting the error. So we already know we're dealing with something a little bit different here. So as I play through, one thing I want you to take note of is there are several clips aligned for this composition. And we don't really know which one or ones may be causing the issue. So for this one, if I scroll up through the timeline, I can see that this particular issue, it persists no matter what. And I need to ferret out where I think this issue actually lies. There's several tracks here. So the way I handle this is I go to the window where it says disable video track and I select these. I just go all the way down and I re-enable. And as I re-enable, I'm able to see where this issue is occurring. So right here, I see that video track three is causing a problem and I'll keep going up. And right now it looks like video track seven and video track three are my problem areas. So let's deal with those. So we're going to start at the top. I'm going to right click on video track seven, open in fusion. And sure enough, inside of my keyframes inspector, I can see that I have something lit up in red. I'm going to select that backspace, go back. The error is gone. 
Now I'm going to enable my next track. It comes back. Right click on that clip, open in the fusion page. And again, in the keyframes viewer, I have something else lit up in red. I'm going to right click on that guy and get rid of him. Go back. All my errors are gone. So again, this is for a very specific type of case. It's specific to you having a composition where everything is actually working okay until you get to the end or you get to a certain section within that composition and then everything seems to fall apart and you get the error. Here you have the ability to cut that part out. I'm just cutting the end off because that's where I'm having the problem for this one. However, I've also seen where I've had frames in the middle tend to have this problem from time to time. And I haven't tested it, but I think the same technique would work for something like that, where I just cut out the part that's bad after converting it over to a compound clip. So the next thing is understanding how to make the issue come about in the first place in most circumstances. And here you can see I have the issue just by having a fusion composition here. If I delete this fusion composition and just go over, grab a raw one from here, bring it back. As soon as I add that down, I immediately get the error. And I'm getting that error because right now there's nothing attached to it. If I open this up in Fusion, I can see that it's lit up in red and it's saying that there's nothing here for media out to do. There's nothing connected to it. So I'll bring down a background connected to my media out and immediately it goes away. If I go back to the edit page, it's gone now. And that's for just one clip. But what happens if you have several clips? One of the confusing things for me was when I first started using Fusion, when you go through videos, people always tell you click the Fusion button. So I would go down and click the Fusion button and I would get into the Fusion interface thinking that that was actually the aggregate of everything that was on the edit page. But I'm not seeing everything that was on the edit page here. If I go back to the edit page, I see a lot more stuff. And so what's happening is if I get rid of the top clip, if I move them out the way and then go back to the Fusion page, now I see something different. I'm seeing a different kind of clip. So what's happening is this. Fusion is actually looking at the first clip it gets to from the top down on the timeline, wherever the cursor is. And here is this Cheeseburger Nation one. If I remove both of these and then go into Fusion, I see something different. Now I'm seeing the picture. So that's important for your troubleshooting. The reason why that's important is because you won't capture everything. You'll think you're looking at the aggregate of whatever that composition has and you're not and you're missing bits and pieces. And that's going to be relevant when we get to the next section. If you want to specifically look at a clip, you need to select that clip, right click it, open it in Fusion. I'm seeing Cheeseburger Nation. I want to see the next thing. I need to right click it and do the same thing. Now I'm seeing this text transition piece. If I go back, right click this, open in Fusion, and now I'm seeing the actual image behind all of that. So with specificity, you need to clearly identify which clip you wanna open in Fusion, click it, and then select it from the context menu that pops up, open in Fusion. Let's take a look at this last example, which has a bunch of stuff in it, and we'll walk through all of these problems. I have no frame available for bad media out right here identified, and I don't know which one it is, so let me disable some stuff. I'm going to start disabling. Okay, so now I'm good to go. If I bring that one back, I see that video track two has a problem. Video track three is good, no problems there, and video track four has a problem. So we'll start at the top again, work on video track four. And I'm looking at this guy. Let's go into Fusion with this. So I'm select that clip, right click it and go open in Fusion page. I see I have media out two, but I don't see a media out two here. And I don't have the little window that pops up when you can't see everything. The little window pops up to help you situate. How do I figure this out? Well, I could select this and now I see media out two. The only thing that happened is one node was over top of the other. And sometimes you'll have something off to the side and you may need to change your view and make sure that you're looking at the entire board. 
But while you're moving things around, if you have 20 or 30 nodes on this page or even more, sometimes a node can block another node. You might be hiding it without even realizing it and it's hard to find. But simply selecting it here will let you know where it is and you can move whatever is on top of it off of it and then select and get rid of it. So we're going to select that guy. I'm going to backspace out and get rid of him. And now that error is gone for that particular node and there are no more issues with him. For the last one, we're going to go back into Fusion. I'm going to select it again, open in Fusion page. And in the Fusion page, I don't actually see anything. In the Keyframes Viewer, which is what you want to have up here at the top, I want to make sure that I have everything open. Ah, now I see it. So I wasn't in the right place on the timeline. Media Out 2. Again, it was covered up. So I select that guy, Media Out 2, Backspace, and now I'm going to go back. Okay, I'm still getting the error, but this time the error has changed. It says no frame available for bad media out one. I need to find it. Let me go back in. So I go back into the Fusion page and all I have is media out one. I don't have a bad media out one, but I do have other Fusion components. So there's the main Fusion component that's here on this page associated with the clip. In this case, it's this particular clip. But also if I go up and look at this clip, I can see I have transition effects applied and this is a fusion transition. So as I click that guy, I can go in and check him out. Sure enough, there's a problem. Bad media out one. Now for this one, I named this one specifically. And as you're troubleshooting, that may be advantageous to you. While you're going through, you might be dealing with so many of these. Some of them have the same name and you can't distinguish which one is actually the problem. So if you right click that node, you can go up to rename from the context menu and you can give it whatever name you want. And I just changed this one. Now that we see that that's an issue, we can close out. And now we go back. Bad media out one, still getting that. I must have another bad media out one somewhere. I'm pretty confident that we got everything associated with this one, but I also have a fusion effects applied here. I have open effects but I also have fusion effects. And these fusion effects, they might as well be something on the edit page that's down here. That's the way I need to treat them when it comes to my troubleshooting. Unfortunately, I don't have the ability to disable these to have them identify themselves by having the error go away. Because these effects are here, whether they're actually active or not, it won't release it from displaying the error. And these control these three dots here. So we're gonna go into these circles. Shape circle number one, we're gonna go into that guy. And sure enough, bad media out one, he's listed. So I'm going to select him, backspace, get out of there. Going to do the same for the other two for shape circle number two. He looks pretty good. Going to the keyframes viewer. Nothing's red here. That's all good. And finally, we'll go to shape circle number three here. And again, bad media out number two. And if I go back, I can see that bad media out two is the error that I'm getting. So this means I'm on the right track. So select and backspace out. Now my error is gone. Let's check the end. Let's make sure because we know, oh, yep, we were still getting that error with that last frame. So we're going to right click new compound clip, create, scroll in so I can select that little piece, backspace out, get rid of him. And now I'm all cleaned up. Issues resolved. Those are several ways to attack this issue, depending on which specific permutation of the error you're seeing. One of the things I've noticed is that I've had an increase of these occurrences of these no frame available errors since I upgraded to version 20. Now, I'm not saying that it's because it's version 20. It could be my way of working has changed. I'm still developing. I'm kind of new at this. You know, maybe I'm using different transitions and effects and I'm doing more infusion. And it seems that it's kind of easy to modify one of the basic effects that you see over here. I may come in and grab something from this effects area or generator area and open it up in fusion and start tweaking it a little bit. And for whatever reasons, one of my tweaks is actually the catalyst for causing the issue. And I don't know exactly how it happened. Regardless of why it's happening, these are some solutions that will help you. The other thing that I've seen happen is if I'm getting the error, sometimes I can just select the clip, go into Fusion with it, and everything looks fine. I don't see a problem. 
and I'll just screw up back and forth on the timeline. That's all I'll do. Then maybe I'll just play a couple of seconds. And then for whatever reason, with that particular one, the issue will have gone away just from me playing it, going into Fusion, playing it inside of Fusion or scrubbing through the timeline a little bit and coming back and everything is resolved. So it's almost like the handoff from Fusion back to the edit page, there's something happening either with some of the frames where it's not detecting and you need to wake it up so that it knows what the current state is. Same thing with the issue with the last frame or a certain number of frames falling out of favor while the rest of the clip plays fine. It's almost like there's a, a handoff not properly happening with some of the frames and it causes the error to manifest. And finally, one of the last things I'll do is when all else fails and it's acting really wonky, I'll think that there's a memory error or some other thing happening on the back end, or maybe there's even a bug that's unknown at this time. So I'll just shut down DaVinci and reopen it. And when I say shut down, I do mean shut it down. If you're on a Mac, that means quit. On Windows, you want to close everything out. You want that program to completely stop and then reopen it fresh. You want it to unload anything that it has in memory running. And when you start it up fresh, a lot of times you'll be back to whatever your normal state was. Amazingly, even while making this video, one of the things that I ran into was that I couldn't make the error appear. As I'm going through, I'm trying to make the error appear. I had everything set up and <laughs> the error wouldn't even, it wouldn't even pop up. So uh, strange behavior for sure. So I exited out and came back and sure enough, the error reappeared. It was there, but for some reason, it wasn't being reflected on the screen at the time. So you may think everything is okay with your video and it's really not. This is one of the things that I've learned to do when it comes time to rendering. I'll get everything set up how I want it on the edit page. I'll set my in and out markers. I'll make sure to save everything, exit out the program completely, you know, quit it on a Mac and, you know, close out on Windows, open it back up and then go to the render page and do it. The last thing I want to have happen is during my render, have a problem because all of the memory is taken up or something is kind of gummed up in the system where if I start fresh, I know I'm in a good state and I can get a clean render. I hope all of this was helpful. This has been a real tricky issue for me. It's kind of coming up hot and heavy and being a new user, when you get into the zone, you don't want these little things slowing you down and they kind of mess up your rhythm when you're trying to get work done. So if any of you can find anything else that I might have missed or have something to add, please feel free to put it into the comment section and we can help each other out with these little issues that pop up. Good luck with the rest of your projects and thanks for watching.